Okay, all right, so we're gonna get started. Great. Okay, welcome everyone uh, to this uh, Sunday afternoon UC Easy webinar on the rather interesting and sometimes overwhelming topic of the college uh, application or the college admission essay. Our speaker for today is Lander Backert, and she's gonna introduce herself in a second. Uh, but before we get started, uh, I just wanted to quickly introduce the sponsor for today's event, which is UCEC. Oh, by the way, you would see on your screens, you would see a poll. If you can uh, fill that, it literally take you 30 seconds, uh, just so that we know who you are. So UCEC stands for University and College Admissions Made Easy. I am a co-founder and CEO of UCEC. And we started this company specifically to help families that are first generation immigrants. I am one of them. So is my wife. So is our co-founder, VK Kolari, and his wife. And uh, we went through this rather overwhelming process of helping our children with college admissions. And that was the inspiration for us to start a company who will, that will help uh, first-generation immigrant families, their students with college admissions. So we do a lot of things. Uh, a free seminar like today, that's one example of how we help. We also offer one-on-one -on -one personalized or private coaching for college admissions and essays through people like Lander. And I'm going to talk about that towards the second half of our mm -hmm. seminar today. I just wanted to share with you that uh, while we are a business, we also have a social calling and we truly believe in giving back to the community. So one of the things that we do through a initiative called the UC Easy Philanthropy, what we do is that to low income students or students from low income families that are first generation, we offer completely free college admissions guidance private guidance to 50 students every year. So I just wanted to share that with you. And any of you, any of you, you can learn more by going on our website. And if any of you want to contribute to that giving back initiative in any way, shape or form, please contact us. We have uh, received extensive media coverage uh, because of our unique uh, delivery model for college admissions guidance, our focus on first generation immigrants, et cetera. So we've been covered in national newspapers like USA Today, Washington Times, San Jose Mercury News, and several others. So with that quick introduction, I'm gonna invite Lander Backert, just in terms of housekeeping items. So her formal talk would be about 25 minutes or so. After that, she's gonna take questions. So please start writing down your questions you could even in your Q&A window on your screen, you can even start typing your questions now. I will try to answer those if I can. Otherwise, Lander will respond to those in the Q&A uh, part of her session. So by the way, you can see us, but we cannot see you, unfortunately. Uh, if you have any housekeeping questions, please do chat to the panelist. And again, your questions, please ask those through the Q&A panel, not chat. With that, welcome, Lander. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Lander, and you can see my screen up there. Um, I live in Montana. Um, it's a lot. It's exactly what you think it's like. Um, there are bears, and, you know, I like rock climbing and fishing and, you know, normal Montana stuff. I don't own a horse, but I probably could ride one if I needed to. Um, I've been a teacher for 10 years um, and I work now specifically with um, teachers um, in Montana and Wyoming and North Dakota, South Dakota. So um, I spend a lot of time in the education world. Um, I've been there forever um, helping kids and helping parents navigate this world is one of my all time favorite things to do. Because, I mean, this is the best time of your life. It doesn't feel that way. It feels like scary and overwhelming. But um, honestly, it's you've got so much stuff ahead of you. And it's just awesome. So um, I worked with, oh gosh, I don't know, 
I don't even know how many kids and parents I've worked with at this point, thousands. Um, I had an IB school. Um, I, you know, worked at the university level. So um, got, I've got some, you know, I've got some history in this whole education world situation. Um, my main mission is to educate, um, organize, and empower you. So you don't feel scared and, and overwhelmed. Um, last but not least, I have a dog. Her name is Junebug. Uh, Junebug is a bloodhound and she's exactly as ridiculous as she looks in that picture. So that being said, I'm glad you guys are here and we're going to get started. So first thing first, don't panic. All right. Um, the idea of writing a college essay seems so scary, but it's actually not. It's the easiest thing in the world because you're writing about yourself. And teenagers are super good about talking about themselves. That's pretty much um, one of those things I feel that you guys really excel at and good on you. This is the, 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 <laughs> the perfect opportunity to make that happen. So um, whatever anxiety you have, um, just kind of tuck it away in a little hand basket and, and realize that we're here to help and this will help. And um, if it does get super scary, you know, you can always call me and we'll, we'll make it less scary. Um, so the UC program um, and pretty much every other university system has a personal statement requirement. Um, and it sounds scary, but actually all it is is you talking about yourself, um, what you've accomplished, and most importantly, who you are as a human. These, these schools get a lot of applicants, um, and they're trying to figure out if you're a good fit for them and, and if if they're a good fit for you. That's it. So this is, this is a time to, you know, let them know who you are. Um, many universities are using a feature where you're required to answer, um, I don't know, four or five short answer essay-ish um, situations, and that's just so they can get to know you. So when you see, um, especially if you're looking at the UC program, they give you eight and you pick um, four, um, and then you go from there. And we're going to talk about this a little more in depth, so don't worry. Um, is it different from an admissions essay, a personal statement? No, <laughs> it's really not. Um, I don't know why they have so many names for this stuff. Uh, I think it's silly, but it's all it's the same general thing. Um, here are some of the things that I commonly see students do incorrectly that does cause some some you know issues. Um, Make sure you read the requirements. I put on there, don't be a maverick, um, which probably made more sense when Top Gun was a thing 20 years ago, but we're going to ignore that and my age. So I want you guys to think about what it's actually asking. If it has a word count, if it says we need no more than 500 words, they will stop reading after 500 words. These people are reading thousands of essays. So just, just read the instructions. Just sit down, get a cup of tea or, you know, a Pepsi, whatever you're into, and just read the instructions. You don't have to read the instructions the rest of your life, but this is a good time to start that habit. Um, oh, heavens to Betsy. All right, next thing, requirements, okay? Um, and I know I just brought this up, but I'm going to repeat it because um, I've worked with high school kids a lot, and sometimes they listen, and sometimes they need just a little bit more um, repetition. So take a moment and figure out what they're asking you for, okay? Do they want three pages? Do they want one page? Um, what should you be writing, okay? Take the time to think this over. Um, if you pull up the University of California's system, they all tend to have the same theme. Usually it's resiliency or tell me about, you know, your favorite academic subject, how have you helped your community, um, tell about a, a difficult time in your life, or a way that you're trying to change the world. Like they're all things that are well within your grasp of humans. Just make sure that if you start writing the essay on how you're changing the community, you don't talk about how awesome your dog is. You know, like read the question and then answer the, you know, the question. Although I would love if people would just write essays about my dog. That would be amazing because <laughs> she's so cool. Okay, next. Think about yourself. You guys are so good at this already. This is amazing. This is bread and butter, okay? Um, once you've read over the prompt, think about what you want the admissions office to know about you, okay? Think of it as like a really weird first date where you're just laying it all out there before you meet the person, um, and then you're just going to go from there, 
Okay, so this is this is you putting your best foot forward, or even um, your weird foot forward, or your musical talents, um, athletics. You know what what makes you you. Okay, universities are all about accepting students who add to the culture and the climate of the school. Okay, if you are really into books and literature and art, you know MIT might not be your your best bet. If you're super good at math. And you love inventing things and you know you're out of this world in the coding world might be a better choice so I want you to think about when you're applying what type of school you're applying for okay and what you're actually interested in and I think this is a huge deal and I've talked with a lot of students about this um, we all know what schools have what reputations and and I know that there's that big 10 or 15 that that everyone's vying for but um, you, you're really going to need to take the time to figure out which university um, actually suits you and your skill set. So just tuck that in your mind brain and go from there. Um, the best way to do step two is to just sit down um, and make a list of everything you've experienced. Okay, write down hobbies, write down books, write down sports that you like, um, people that have helped make you, make you, you know, you. Okay, um, I remember doing this when I was a kid and I wrote about, I don't know, probably Harry Potter and my dad and how much I love being outdoors. And, you know, the, those are the things that you can easily list so that they get a understanding of who you are as a person. Step three, picking your topic. This is a little tricky. Okay, not like overly complicated tricky, just tricky. Um, the easiest way I've found is to ask yourself this question. Okay, if everyone in the world had a chance to get to know me in one moment or through one moment, what would it be? Okay, so I want you to just spend a couple seconds thinking about um, what's happened to you, good, bad, awesome, ridiculous, ugly, whatever, um, that if you could put a snapshot of that up in the world, that people would, would be able to see your you -ness. Think about that for a second. Um, and then start there, okay? Um, your Eunice is what universities want, okay? Um, sometimes the students really say what they think the universities want to hear, um, and just be yourself. You got to be yourself because you're going to be at that school for however many years, and, you know, being yourself is important, and giving you, you their, the admissions office your full person is, is necessary. Okay, the golden rule is, of course, however, um, that writing is so much easier if you're writing about something you care about, okay? Pick something you care about, all right? If you are incredibly musically talented um, and, and you know that you're musically talented, but what you really love is ping pong, like write about ping pong, all right? Make it, keep it simple. Uh, I mean, I, I can't even tell you how many students write about you know something that they're good at but it's not something that their heart's into and it those essays become a lot more difficult so just keep that in mind step four outlines i love outlines guys i know that outlines are ridiculous and you've probably been writing them since third grade and me even saying the word outline is giving you like the shivers but trust me okay um, if you spend two hours outlining your papers then writing it becomes super duper simple all right, outline your paper. Just, just do it. Just, you got this. I have so much faith in you. Um, outline however you feel best. Okay. Um, make sure you include spots for the introduction of your paper, which is important. Okay. Um, the first body paragraph, second body paragraph, um, paragraphs three through five, write a conclusion. If any of you are listening to this and are thinking to yourself, self, I have no idea how to outline a paper. Someone drop that ball. Um, just email me or Vinny and we will get you set up. I got this. Okay. So don't panic uh, if you need if you need help with that. Um, so I want to pause for just a second, look over, make sure there aren't any questions that I'm missing here. Looks like we're doing all right. All right, cool. All right, so step one. Um, introduction, briefly introduce yourself. Your thesis should be easy to understand and follow. Okay, here's an example. Of all the experiences that most impacted my life, the adoption of my dog, Junebug, 
provided the opportunity to build work ethic, a healthy lifestyle, and compassion. Okay, um, the people reading your essays need to know where you're going. Think of it as a roadmap. Um, if you need to get from one side of town to the other and you're giving directions to, you know, your scatterbrained aunt, like you're going to say you're going to go a mile and then you're going to turn left and then you're going to see this restaurant with flamingos and then you're going to turn right and it's right there. Um, and the people reading your essays are going to need to see the exact same thing. So keep that in mind. Um, body paragraphs. Okay, this is a pretty simple formula. Again, if you've never seen it before, um, please just reach out to us. We're here to help you. Um, and it just makes everything so much easier. So think of it like this. Um, your introduction sentence is one or two sentences. Um, statement about your main idea, adopting Junebug. It was the coolest thing ever. Um, an anecdote or example. So um, essays essay admissions folks love a good story. Okay. And that's essentially what you guys are doing. Um, you're just telling your story. So, um, you know, I could talk about how, or tell a little story about how I, you know, was worried that I was never going to be the, the type of runner I wanted to be until I got June bug. And then she pushed me to, um, exercise a lot because when she wasn't exercising, she was eating things I cared about. So just, you know, tell a story, make it light, make it heavy, make it, you know, we're all coming from different places. Um, second statement about your main idea, another example of it, transition to the next paragraph. Um, make sure that <laughs> to see if there are paragraph requirements. Again, three body paragraphs are the norm, but um, if they need only 250 words, that's, you're not going to have three body paragraphs. You're going to have one. So read the instructions, read the instructions, read the instructions. Conclusion paragraph. Okay, wrap it up your paper. It's obvious that this is your conclusion, so no need to state this is the conclusion. Um, the people reading your essays are very smart. They know they're at the end of your paper, so don't panic. Um, oftentimes, students can restate the thesis. This is common practice, but if you avoid it and extend, or sorry, excuse me, instead explain the point of your paper without retyping your thesis, it helps. Okay? Um, and I know that restating the thesis is how a lot of you have been taught um, to wrap up your paper, but instead of saying, June Bug's the coolest dog ever because she keeps me healthy and, you know, I love her face. Um, you can say owning a dog has provided me with a multitude of appreciation in my life and my world um, and who I am as a human. So it's very, very similar. It's just not, you know, you don't necessarily have to say word for word what your original thesis was. Um, I want you to also give a few examples from your body paragraphs of how your experience person influence, supported, changed you, and then wrap it up with a statement about how these traits will make you a strong whichever university candidate you want to go to. Okay, so um, think about a way that you can push that out so that they know that you're going to rock their world when you get to wherever it is that you're going that's amazing. All right, step five. This is the good part, right, guys? So the step five is now we're writing the paper using your outlines, which you've painstakingly written and that you love. A um, few things to consider. Don't use weird fonts. Don't do it. They don't care. They hate it. Trust me, they hate it. Um, use Times New Roman or similar. Use one-inch margins. Um, avoid contractions and exclamation points. You can obviously use both of those things, um, but high schoolers are super heavy on the exclamation points. Like, I don't know... How you guys are that excited? Probably because you're younger than me. But just don't, just keep it cool with the exclamation. You can't, you can't exclaim everything. That's it's just don't do it all the time. If you know, um, unless you are one of those people that's just naturally exclaiming at all times. In which case, go for it. But I'm guessing that a majority of you, as you're sitting in a, you know, webinar about college essays on a beautiful Sunday afternoon, are probably not running about overly enthusiastic punctuation wise. Um, and last but not least, don't text your paper. Don't use that language. I don't even understand it. So I'm guessing that the people who are reading your essays at the collegiate level aren't going to get it either. Spell those words out. I know you guys know how to do it. Um, you has, you know, three whole letters. I have faith that you can handle it. 
Um, step six, this is super important. I find this almost as important um, as writing the outline. Um, our brains do really weird things when we're writing. And so when we read it in our heads, uh, the paper will say what we think it says and not what it actually says. And the only way you can catch mistakes um, is to read it out loud. And I know it feels weird. Okay, just do it. Just go, you know, sit in your bedroom or if your folks are super supportive and, you know, want to listen or whatnot, read it to them so you can catch the weird spots. Um, or you can always call me and read it to me. That's fine too. Um, submitting a well proofread paper puts you at a much higher standard than other applicants. Guys, I cannot, <laughs> I cannot say this more. I have seen some admissions essays that would make the average English teacher just curl up in a ball and cry under a desk. Like not pretty, not good. You got to proofread. Um, if proofreading freaks you out, um, that's why we're here. Um, I don't know how many papers they proofread at this point. Try and do some math in there. More than 2,000. So, like, if, if proofreading freaks you out, don't worry. I got your back, yo. Um, seven, time estimates. Okay. Once you pick your idea, this process should take you about 10 days. Okay. If you're super involved in other things, um, if you're on a sports team or, you know, you babysit a lot or you, I don't know what you guys are doing, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, it should take you about 10 days. Okay. So I want you to just figure out how to best organize that for yourself, um, and your family. Um, the outline should probably take the most time. Okay. If you're reading that and you're saying, cool, I'm going to skip that. Don't, don't skip it. <laughs> okay. Don't skip it without the outline. Writing your paper is going to take you a long time. Okay. So just, um, just be cool. Just do it. Um, and it'll help. So, you know, if you're starting to think about applications, you know, give yourself a couple weeks. You know, if you need help writing it, um, I think the process with me usually takes about, I don't know, 10 days or a little bit less depending on how, how much you've accomplished. So just keep it in your mind that that's a, that's a, a thing that we can do for you. Okay. Um, things to remember. And these are important. Um, universities want to accept a student who will graduate and be successful. Number one, they want to, like that's what the admissions process is. It's not super judgment town. It's will this person graduate and then do awesome things so that we can say we taught that person. That's it. So when you're thinking about this, don't just take the stress out of it, tuck it over there. They're just trying to figure out if you're going to graduate or not, which you probably will. So go you. That's awesome. Um, second, universities care that you care about something. This is number one, okay? Um, so much of the academic world now is universities want people who are going to like grab life by the horns and, and do something remarkable. And people who care do remarkable things. So whatever you're into, they wanna know that you're, you're excited about something. Um, and last but not least, and this is very important for you to remember, you are an investment for the university. I know that um, you're the one paying tuition, but once you graduate, you have that, you know, that university stamp on you and everything you do reflects back on that university. So they're trying to pick people that they feel will represent um, what they represent well. So um, if you think about the essay writing process more like this and less like, ooh, um, it helps so much. All right. Vinny? Okay, Landa, can you hear me? I can. Okay, awesome. So that was quick, uh, uh, before time, I must say. <laughs> uh, okay, so, so let's do this. Let, let's uh, see whether people have any questions. Uh, or, Landa, do you have, from your experience, questions that, uh, 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 that you typically come across? Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, I did see a couple of attendees raise their hands. So guys, unfortunately, we cannot take verbal questions. The only way for you to ask your question is through the Q&A window. So please type there and Lander will either respond by text. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so Arman, Madhu, I see you guys raised your hands. That's not gonna help, unfortunately. Please type your questions in the Q&A window, which you should be able to see in your menu bar. 
Awesome. Um, so some of the questions that I normally get are, um, do I have to write about something sad? And the answer is, if you want to, okay? Um, universities are, are all about resiliency. They want to see that you can survive stuff because being at college, when you're used to being at home with your folks taking care of you, um, I, you know, like the first year of college is really, really, really hard. So they want to know that if you get a bad grade, you're going to be able to just like muscle through. So, um, yeah, totally. Um, if you want to write about something sad, you can, if you want, if you're nothing sad's happened to you. Awesome. Good for you. You're one of the 10% of people who are just naturally happy. Amazing. Um, write about that. Um, there is a question popping in here. Uh, Lander? Yeah. So, uh, if I can quickly add to that point, mm -hmm. So, uh, and, and I think today we have not, I think, we know that today there are plenty of students, uh, lots of incoming mm -hmm. uh, juniors and seniors in our okay. session today. So guys, so one of our advisors is a current uh, admissions officer at UC Berkeley. And we have several counselors on our team who actually are, they read applications and, and essays for different universities, they did or they do. So, the main goal of your essay, like Lander said, is to make a connection. The essay has to have an impact. If you're not doing that, now keep in mind, and you, I'm sure you've, you've seen videos, so many of them uh, on our Facebook page or elsewhere, that even in an expensive private college, they typically would spend between three to five minutes on an application, mm -hmm. everything including essays. Right. So your opportunity to make an impression is you have a short window. So make that count. So make an impression, be interesting, be unique. So this admissions director, Tim Ravy from UC Berkeley, he actually did a seminar recently for us. This guy is old. He's been doing this for <laughs> a while and uh, he would. So his wife for 45 years. Several times he, she would ask him that, why were you crying last night because he was in a study or why were you laughing last night? And he was just reading essays. So <laughs> now, like Lander said, it's not about making them cry. And we all hope because we wish you well, we hope that you did not have sad stories in your life, right? So, but it's about making a connection in one way or other. Imagine a TV show or a movie that might be technically excellent, uh, right? Excellent sound quality will win Oscars for technical editing, but doesn't, it's like you sit through those two hours and you come back, what was that movie all about? Uh, right? I have no idea. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so make an impact, you know, don't create a boring movie. Yeah, Lander? I agree. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Um, so I'm looking at some of the questions that are popping up here. Um, and a lot of them are, listen, I'm having a hard time getting started. I'm going to defer back to make a list, guys, of the things that you love, things that you like, um, people in your life that have influenced you or pushed you to be better. Um, and then once you make that list, just circle, just go through it and circle the ones that you feel like you could write about. Um, and just go from there, just making a list about your life. Um, Another question I have, um, do I tell a story about myself or just answer the question for the personal statement questions? Either. Um, if you, I, I, look, I wrote these down. One of them, the UC prompts, talks about leadership. So if you have a story about how you're the head of student council or how you run a church group or whatever, then writing about yourself is totally cool. Um, there are some questions that talk about um, your creativity. Um, so, I mean, a lot of them, they're, they're asking about you and your story. So I'm going to defer more to writing about yourself. These aren't questions like, why did Napoleon not successfully conquer France for any extended amount of time? It's more, tell me why you're a creative person. So um, I, would go, I would go with that. Um, what makes an essay stand out from essays that are on similar topics? Your personality is what makes them stand out. It's not the essay, it's you. Um, also good grammar and proofreading and having a paper that goes from A to wherever um, point wise. Uh, it's not the essay that stands out, my friend, um, it's you. So just keep that in mind. Um, 
when you're writing it, but also have someone proofread it, please, I'm begging you. Um, along with the essay writing process, can you explain about how the grades are evaluated during the admissions process? I cannot, um, but there are tons of counselors at UC Easy that understand that incredibly well. My forte is how you write strong essays for admissions. Um, and I want you to think of it as a piece of pie. Like without a strong essay, then your grades are not, you know, as, as collective as, you know, it's like your standardized tests, your essay, and your transcripts all go together. Um, and I'm on the essay side of that. So if you have questions about that, I think shooting Vinny an email to um, get that organized would be, would yeah. be awesome. Uh, Landon, and I can quickly add to that. Mm -hmm. So, 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 so for the person who asked that question, the essay, I think the question is more about how important are grades. So essentially guys, grades are the foundation of your college admissions process. The grades have to be good. Uh, uh, now, there are two scenarios that uh, if you are applying to the truly the top ranked college, UC Berkeley, UCLA, Stanford, Ivy Leagues, those kind of things, then the assumption there is that your grades and your test scores are already going to be in a great range. And among all of the other students that have all of these great grades and test scores, now how do you become that special person that Stanford will admit? And that's when essays and things like recommendation letters come in. But for those top tier college, those grades are a bare minimum. You need to have good grades to be able to get in the door for them to consider you. If the grades are not good, they'll not even get your essays. So, uh, so it's not an either or. Now for other type colleges, other colleges, what can happen is that uh, your essays can a truly well-written essay can actually compensate for weaknesses in other areas and possibly push you ahead of the pack. So there are two different scenarios. One is top tier and the second is other kind of colleges. But in either which case, you've got to have good grades and do the best you can and write the best essay you can. Mm -hmm. Andrew? Yeah. Um, so I'm answering questions as we're going along here. Um, the UC College essay system, apart from the four we submit, are there other essays or prompts we have to answer? There are some short answers in there that are pretty short. Like, um, it is all on their website and it goes step by step by step for the whole situation. Um, but no, not typically. You get the four personal essay statements and then you go from there. Um, Five paragraph format is common. Can I make it more conversational and quirky? Absolutely, you can, but for everything that is wonderful and great in the world, have someone with an actual English degree edit your paper so they can tell you if it sounds conversational and quirky or completely insane. And that is like the, the most loving English teacher statement I can give because there are kids that are really talented at writing unique essay structures. And to those kids, I say, go for it. Like hit your wagon to whatever star. And there are some kids that want to be really good at it and aren't quite there yet. So by all means, do your thing, man or lady, but um, please, please, please just have someone who has an English degree read it over it so they can tell you if you're answering the questions in the way that you think that you are, okay? Um, what if you don't have any leadership examples? Cool, there are like 12 other essays you can choose from. You can talk about overcoming adversity, your greatest talent, the way you've um, improved your community, you can talk about um, a skill set you have, a person that's changed your life. Um, I agree with you. Not everyone's a leader, obviously. Like if everyone was a leader, we're, I don't even know what we would do. So um, <laughs> write, write about what's important to you, okay? Um, would you suggest the essay should hey, target hey, logos? Landon. Yeah. Uh, so actually, if you stop the screen share, then the audience mm -hmm. can see you in full screen mode. Oh, perfect. Here I am. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, logos or pathos, it depends on what type of person you are. Um, I mean, if you like to pull on heartstrings, go for it. If you want to show them, you know, the logical steps that you've taken to get where you are as a student or an athlete or a musician, um, then do that. 
it's totally 100% up to you um, and who you are as a person. Can you write about failure? Yes. Okay. People fail all the time. Um, maybe if you're writing about failure um, and if, you know, there needs to be some type of Cinderella moment after the failure. Like if you failed hard and then just curled up into a ball and laid in a mud puddle for the next six years, like we don't want to hear about that. We want to hear that you failed dramatically because we all do. And then you picked yourself back up and, and started moving again. Okay. Should I start doing sports to get accepted by the university? No, no, not everyone's an athlete. I played volleyball two days ago and almost broke my face. Like don't like, <laughs> and I have several degrees. Okay. It's not necessary. Um, and I've answered a couple of questions like this um, too. Um, you, when you guys are picking extracurriculars, um, you need to choose what you love. Okay. If you think a college will want you more if you play football than if you, you know, hang out, you know, in the visual arts area um, and you hate football, don't play it. Like this is very much about you. And, and, and this is a, a much larger question. You guys are somewhere between five and five years. And I don't know, some of you are eight months from just actual adulthood where you doing what you love is how you, how you become a human. You know, like you, you finding your passion and your goals is how you change the world. Um, and if you spend your whole life doing stuff, you hate your, your world's going to not be cool. So now's a great time to start to do things that you care about. Um, should your essay reflect the major you want to pursue? Sure. Or not, whatever. Um, I think if you're going to a really targeted school that has a very specific program you're applying to, by all means, bring it up. Um, but if you're super into computer science and you write your essay on how tough your grandma is, because grandmas are amazing, they, they don't care. They care that you, you know, have something you care about. How does one show growth in an essay? Um, you say, listen, I started here at academic sports life and now I'm here. Okay. Um, if you show growth in cooking, maybe the first time you tried to make banana pudding, you know, the kitchen and the cat were completely covered and now you can whip out a souffle, you know, just like it's explain like how you got from point A to point B. Um, those are so good at questions right on. Um, recommendations, submit as many as they ask you to. Okay. Um, are teacher recommendations better than extracurricular recommendations? Not necessarily. I think sometimes teachers see who you really are, and I think sometimes coaches do, um, or your church leader. Uh, pick people that know you. Okay, so um, teacher recommendations are great. They, they know who you are academically, but if someone knows you socially, um, that's cool too. How, how important are clubs if you want to get accepted? I, again, you got to do what makes you happy. Um, clubs are great. Sports are great. Volunteering is great. Um, but is that an end all and be all? Like, is Stanford going to look at you and say, well, this kid did not do a club. Um, he's out. I think more what they want to see is that you have the ability to juggle multiple things because college guys is you juggling a lot of stuff and they want to make sure that you can handle juggling. Okay. So uh, Lander, mm -hmm. so why don't we let you catch your breath? Thank you. And, uh, because you've been going nonstop. Uh, <laughs> so, and, so let me talk a little bit about UCEC and for, for those in the audience that might still feel overwhelmed and might uh, need a helping hand with uh, either just essays or the other part of college admissions, how can they get help? Let me talk about that mm -hmm. for about, take a few minutes and then we'll come back to you for round two of rapid fire Kay. Q and A. Okay, in the meantime, you can convey some warmth to Junebug. <laughs> <laughs> All right, okay. So let me share my screen. Okay. Andrew, can you see my screen? I sure can. Okay, so let's make this big. All right. So remember in the beginning of the presentation, we talked about UC Easy and how for those of you who need little bit more than these seminars or self-help, we actually have a team of 25 folks like Lander, 
uh, as you can see, she's extremely passionate about what she does, extremely talented, obviously, and uh, she cares. And we have several people like Lander that can help you in either the complete college admissions process, and we can start, and we actually recommend that you start as early as eighth grade to get professional guidance so that you can make the right decisions in terms of making you the most competitive for the college admissions process. So you can either sign up for our comprehensive program for one-on-one -on -one coaching with folks like Lander, or you can just pick and choose. So for example, rising seniors, you guys can say, all I need is help with essays. I've got everything else covered. And that's fine too. So you can go to this URL, uceasy.com slash union to learn more about our counseling, uh, college admissions counseling programs. Now, for those of you, especially the rising seniors that are looking for help for essays alone. So we have certain packages. So as you can see on the screen, if you are looking for help with essays for UCs, then we have a comprehensive program for $999 that does not only the brainstorming, brainstorming like Lander said is all about what is my unique life story? What should I write on? What prompts should I pick? What prompts or topics? So we will do that and, and we will do the review back and forth. Or you could say that all I want is review because I've got the brainstorming covered. So these are high level details I understand. Please email us at this email address and to set up time and we can explain the details to you. Now common app and supplemental essays, that little, that's a hairy ball, which is why we cannot have a package price for you because the biggest variable here is how many and specifically which private colleges you want to apply to and each one of them has different number of supplemental essays. So we would like to sit down with you to understand your goal a little bit more, see your starting point as to what does your current essay look like, if any, and uh, again, how many colleges and specifically which colleges you'll apply to, and that's when we can give an estimate. Now, for those of you who are looking for comprehensive help, what you can do is, that first of all, easiest might be just to call us or email us to set up time and we'll walk you through all of this decision making. So you normally what you do is you start with one hour consultation with someone like Lander and then you can decide how you want to proceed with us. So you, we have packages where you can pay one time. We have packages based upon low monthly payment options. So for those of you that cannot afford big checks, or you can say, you know what, I don't want packages or I cannot afford packages. I'm just gonna do say 10 hours consultation with Lander. And that's fine too, because we want you to get some help and we want to provide that help. Love it. Here is just an example uh, that uh, you can see on our website as well. So, for, so you can go to, go to our website here, union. Our website is uceasy.com, but this particular one is union.uceasy.com. Here you can see a list of activities that we do for every grade. So starting from eighth grade. And so for rising seniors, guys, we can help you with college list, with selecting majors. We can review your testing strategy, essays, obviously. We can create a plan for you so you don't miss dates. We can help you create a high impact resume, help you in filling applications, campus visit strategy. If you get waitlisted, how to move you up in the waitlist, we can help you. We can help you with final college selection, with financial aid, the whole shebang. So uh, again, if you are in a younger grade, I see that several of you are rising eighth graders and ninth graders. This is an example. And again, if you call us, we can walk you through this entire list. So let's go back here. I'm almost done with my presentation and we'll go back to Lander. So I just wanted to share a couple of things that uh, in terms of, there, may, there are other companies that actually offer college admissions type help. The difference with us is threefold. The first is quality of our experts. So you've seen Lander yourself. 
So everyone else like Lander is handpicked. We are tremendously proud of our counselors and uh, we spend huge amount of energy and time before they join the team. The second is that you have a voice in selecting the expert. So whenever you feel ready, you talk to us, we'll do a quick interview with your student. And uh, based upon the student's personality and learning style, we will recommend the right counselor so that the student and counselor can form a great team, which is trust-based. And lastly, I already talked about a flexible engagement model. Don't worry if you don't have too much money. So because like I said, that we can help you even with a small amount of money, even if you cannot afford our full packages. Few other resources, please continue looking for additional seminars and webinars. So if you are in the California Bay Area, we do have a SA bootcamp coming up uh, in collaboration with the India Community Center or the ICC starting July 29th. You can see recordings of past webinars on different topics, college admissions, extracurriculars, financial aid. These are completely free. They're available again on this URL. And check out on our Facebook page, Ask Friday, where we cover an important question answered by someone like Lander every single Friday. Okay, so with that, let's get, get back to Lander. Lander, hopefully if you've caught your breath and got some water. Now, yep, I'm good. Part two. <laughs> Okay, here we okay. go. Um, and I've been answering just a couple of questions just so I can make sure that I got to everybody. So um, just check the answered box if there are some questions um, just in case that you want to see them. Um, so um, is it important to colleges to be particularly talented in a specific area and field? No. They just want to know that you care about something. Um, there, you know, there are some universities, like if you're applying to MIT and you have no mechanical minded skill set that's not going to be the right school for you um but if you're applying to stanford i mean and you're a, a brainiac with words then awesome great you know so i no, you don't have to be you guys i everyone on the planet is pretty much mediocre and i mean that in the coolest way possible like we are we are all very much um cut from the same cloth which is both amazing um but realize that truly you're amazing at something more amazing than other people. And you just need to, um, sort that. Someone asked, um, uh, what if I don't love anything? And I was like, you totally do. Yeah. I mean, like you, you love something. I mean, there's someone in your life typically that has been there for you. Um, this might be a great time to start hugging your folks, um, because they fed you your whole life and support you and, you know, give you confidence and compassion. So you love something. Um, just, just, just figure it out what it is. And and some of this guys is you sitting down in a quiet room and turning your phone off and, um, and thinking about yourself, like who you actually are, which is very scary, especially if you're in eighth grade. If you're in eighth grade, give that a couple of years, man. Um, but if you're a junior or senior, you should start. You should be able to see around the edges who you are, and more importantly, who you want to be. So keep that in mind. Um, admissions officers spend approximately three to five minutes. What would you recommend as a tool to catch this officer's eyes and keep them engaged? I would suggest a good story and a well-organized essay. Um, if they're jumping about an essay and they don't know where you're going, that's not going to be great for you. So I'm going to go back to my outline um, and your story. Um, they're going to be engaged by you and your ability to organize your thoughts. Um, what if you've shown no growth in high school? Lies and hogwash. You have grown in some, <laughs> in some way. Guys, um, give yourself some credit, okay? You, you've had a whole experience. Like most of you go into high school as actual kids and, and you emerge as adults. I like that amount of growth is quick and it happens. So again, take some time, turn your phone off, go for a walk, whatever it is you do, um, and just figure out who you are. A little okay um, yeah you've grown you've grown like I mean at, at least you've grown up or out or you know but your, your brain has also grown like that's that's what learning is 
Um, can you write about a seemingly meaningless task such as mopping the floor, taking out the trash, or stargazing? Um, I wouldn't. I mean, unless it's important to you, more of the questions, like specifically UC questions, are tell me about how you know you're creative or tell me about how you change the world in your community. And if you change the world in your community by mopping the floor, awesome, good for you. Um, but if you're just trying to show them that you are a strong writer, um, then you're not telling them who you are as a person necessarily. Like they, they need to see some meat of the personality. Um, and that's tough because it's vulnerable. Okay, because if you put your whole personality on a piece of paper and then they don't accept you, then you feel rejected and that sucks. And I get that. But if you don't say anything important about yourself, you know, they're not going to know who you are. So you got to take that jump. What did Kurt Vonnegut say? We have to be continually jumping off of cliffs and developing our wings on the way down. Just jump for it, guys. Um, let's see. If you could break down essays, GPA, ACT um, percentages, they're about a third each. I would say, Vinny, you could probably back me up, but I think it's it's more of like a pie, as I explained earlier. Um, so can you read that question for me one, yep. one time, please? If you could break down the essays, GPA, um, standardized test scores into percentages, what would the respective importance of each topic be? Yeah, uh, yeah I, I think that this response is an imperfect science, guys. Uh, so. I, I think Landers, uh, you could possibly uh, use Landers uh, framework, what she provided, but I think the key is that this is a pie. And uh, uh, so the, the, the more important thing uh, that when you ask those kind of questions, when I give an answer, I ask students and families, how would you use the response I give you? Is it just shoot the breeze type question? Or are you going to do something with that uh, answer that I give you? So I think the answer really is that from a strategy perspective, it's twofold. If you are a younger student in your eighth, ninth, and 10th grade, you do the best you can in all possible fields, which are typically three uh, at that stage, academics, extracurriculars, and testing strategy. Those are the three things you're controlling. For juniors and seniors, all of these things like essays and resume, everything comes into play. So the biggest thing at that point of time is that the pie analogy that Lander provided is an excellent one. Or think of this like uh, that you've got six different tools available to you. Where I'm going with this is most of us cannot improve in every single area. So from a strategy perspective, Juniors and seniors, what you need to look at is of the remaining time that you have before that whole Cinderella story turns into a pumpkin, which is November 30 for UCs and January 1. Otherwise, the time that you have, what is the best use of your time given who you are, right? You cannot fix everything. And one of the roles of a professional like Lander is to guide you in making that best decision about how best to use your time. Should I retake the SCT again? Should I spend summer time on community courses? Or should I try to just hit my essays out of the park? I think that's the way to look at this, is those quantitative breakup, since I don't know who's asking that question, but feel free to call me sometime. The question is, even if I gave you a quantitative answer, what would you do with it? Yeah. Uh, uh, so, all right. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure somebody, somebody doesn't like my answer. I'm going to get hate, <laughs> hate mail tonight. Um, no, you're good. I am getting a lot of structural questions from you all. Like, how do you start the essay? What's the format of the first sentence? Can I start the essay with a single word? Is sentence structure strict? Um, it, these are all awesome questions that I would love to answer. Um, but I don't know because I don't know you right now. Um, so this is more of an ask, you know, contact you see easy um, for some help. But um, I, I, I don't, I, I won't be able to answer how do you start your essay until I know who you are. Because some people, it, it just depends on you. So um, I'm not ignoring you. There are a million ways to start it. You should do the best that you can. How do you cross the line, not cross the line between personality and bragging about your skills? Um, I think telling the truth about yourself is not bragging. OK, 
okay? I know that I'm an excellent reader. Um, I know that I am horrible at volleyball, okay? Like, you know what you're good at. And if you talk about things copacetically, if you talk about them, you know, in a way that's pulled together, it's not bragging. It's just saying, listen, you know, my GPA is right here. And it's right here because I'm an exceptionally talented math student. Like, I understand math. It rocks my world. Um, that's not bragging. That's just, you know, talking about yourself. Yeah. And Elandry, if I can add to that, mm -hmm. uh, I'm just actually just going to add a nuance to it a little bit. I think you covered it excellently. So guys, so keep in mind this, that an admissions officer is not a bad person. They want you as much as you want them. Remember, without students, Stanford is just buildings, uh, right? So they want you. Now, how do they choose? Stanford takes 1,500 students every year at, at undergrad level. They, how do they choose you versus somebody else? You have to tell them why you are special. So I, I can't see you right now, but uh, I wish I could ask you, if you don't tell your story, who will? I <laughs> agree. Right? <laughs> so, you know, we hear this all the time, that two neighbors, two parents talking to each other after the college season, which, by the way, just ended recently, and they would talk to each other. You know, my kid had a higher GPA, but did not get into XYZ college, and my neighbor's kid did, even though GPA was a little lower. My, the first question that we ask is, how strong were your essays? Did you do a good job on essays? Did you tell your story well? Did you tell it in a compelling and exciting manner? How good were your recommendation letters? How was your resume, right? People, when parents exchange notes, they don't talk about any of those. They keep going back to GPA and test scores, which one of the big takeaways from today, hopefully, is that they are part of the story, but not all of it. So blow the, please, 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 like Landa says, please blow that essay out of the park. <laughs> Create that essay with the most passion that you can ever come up with. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, take, take, let's take one more and then wrap up. Perfect, because I only have one more left. Um, so can your essay be about something that happened in seventh grade or should you only talk about stuff in high school? Um, one of the more compelling essays I read last year was about something that happened in third or fourth grade. Um, you should, you should talk about the things that make you, you, and sometimes our defining moments happen in high school and sometimes they happen when we're, we're kids. So, um, you should do, you should talk about you. Um, if you're a seventh grader right now or an eighth grader right now, um, I would maybe, you know, give it a couple of years, see if something else happens in your world. But, um, if you're a senior and you know, for a fact, that's, that's, um, a thing that, that changed you, go for it. I'm like, great, good on ya. So, awesome. Thanks for all those questions, guys. That was killer. Great, uh, uh, Lander, thank you so much for taking time on, uh, on this beautiful Sunday afternoon. I hope, uh, <laughs> Montana, Montan, I would imagine your Sunday afternoon will be better than ours. It is very beautiful and maybe 75 degrees. It's nice. Awesome. So thank you so much for taking the time. And I wanted to thank uh, the students for attending, but more so the parents, their commitment to their children that instead of enjoying siesta or doing whatever fun <laughs> you want to do, you are listening to us on this uh, Sunday afternoon. So thank you for joining us. And again, if any of you needs additional help, feel free to contact us. But other than that, we wanted to wish all of you the very best with the college admissions process. Have a great rest of Sunday and have a great weekend. Talk to you Bye soon. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye for now.